The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind, and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And Jesus said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forward. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love and renew the face of the earth. Amen. It's June already. We're on the brink of summer, even though it's gloomy outside. And June makes me think of road trips. Is anybody going on a road trip this summer? Yeah, some road trips. Okay, and for some reason... Road trips got me thinking about that classic parenting strategy of threatening to stop the car if the children don't start behaving, okay? Right? Parents glaring in the rearview mirror, am I going to have to stop this car? Has anyone ever been the one saying that or hearing that? Maybe. I think with iPads and iPhones, maybe not, that doesn't happen as much anymore. Maybe, maybe not. Well, in today's gospel, Jesus is in a stop the car moment. Stop the car. Did you hear the verse? Jesus looked around them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart. What caused him so much anger and grief? The leaders were putting their particular interpretation of a religious law ahead of the needs of a real person standing right in front of them. Those leaders believed it was okay to work or to heal someone on the Sabbath if it was a matter of life or death. But they didn't think the man's withered hand or earlier in the day, the disciples' hunger that made them pluck the grain from the fields, they didn't think that justified the work of healing or harvesting on the Sabbath. Just wait a day was their position. Jesus said, no, I'm stopping this car. 
Jesus didn't throw out the Sabbath commandment, the commandment to keep holy the Sabbath day that we heard today in the first reading. But Jesus demanded that they reconsider what it means to make the day holy. The Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath, he said. If the Sabbath, if the law doesn't soften your hearts, soften your hearts towards yourself and towards others, if it doesn't increase your compassion and caring and help you be more human, more humane, You've missed the point. Jesus' message was very serious. It was very serious then, and that same message is very serious now. If your religious beliefs, your interpretations of Scripture, your spiritual practices harden your hearts instead of softening them, it's time to rethink your religion. We don't like it when people criticize our religious practices or the ways we read the Bible or tell us we're getting it wrong. And neither did the people around Jesus. Today's gospel ends with the ominous words, they conspired against him how to destroy him. So upsetting was Jesus to them. Now, Nikolaj Grundvig, has anybody heard of him? Yeah, some of you, these Lutherans, good Lutherans. A 19th century Danish Lutheran pastor had a motto. His motto was, human first, then Christian. Human first, then Christian. That sounds shocking, to our ears. That was shocking to me when I first heard it, because we know nothing should come before our faith in Christ. And that's true. Yet, we know it is Christ himself who taught us that mercy and compassion in action, love of God and love of neighbor, fulfill the commandments. Our God's intention, God's will for us. Christian beliefs and practices that do not build up love, that do not humanize us and humanize others in our sight, are not worthy of the name Christian. We cannot go against the law of love in the name of Christ. So Grundvig's motto, human first, then Christian. And Jesus saying, the Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath, are both ways of saying, don't let your religion get in your way of being human. Don't do inhumane things in the name of your religion in the name of God, in the name of Christ. Wouldn't it be nice if we could time travel back to the Crusades and tell them that? Wouldn't it be nice if we could time travel back to the medieval Inquisition that thought torturing people with heretical views would serve to promote true faith in Jesus Christ? Wouldn't it be great to go back to them to say, human first, then Christian? And truth be told, I wish I could whisper back to my 19-year-old self who was so confident that she could judge others and tell them what was right and wrong because she knew a little bit about the Bible and a little bit about theology. I wish I could tell her, don't let your religion get in the way of your humanity. Human first, then Christian. We don't always 
get the opportunity to make amends for the way we or our churches have let religion get in the way of our humanity. But today, we do. We get that opportunity. This afternoon, our Reconciling in Christ team and any of you who want to join us are headed to Camarillo uh, Pride, Camarillo Pride at Kildee Park. It's a place for our lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender neighbors and families to be seen and safe and supported, and it is a chance for us through our presence to say on behalf of the church, we are sorry for all the ways our false understandings of religion have kept us from seeing your humanity. Our presence is there to say we are sorry for the inhumane treatment, the pain and the harm Christians have caused you in the name of Christ himself. We are sorry about the churches that didn't welcome you and don't. The churches that don't recognize the holiness of your marriages, that they are equal to the holiness of ours. With my presence there, I want to say, I want to look into the eyes of our LGBTQ neighbors and say, I am so sorry for the ways the hardness of heart in some Christians has kept you away from the gentle and humble heart of Christ. We are sorry for the churches that told your families to cast you out, and we want you to know there is a safe church, a welcoming and affirming church for you and your families here in Camarillo. A withered hand was healed in today's gospel. And a withered hand has been healed in the church. It's that hand of the church that was meant to reach out to welcome all God's children, including God's gay children, that was withered and shriveled for too long, unable to be extended in compassion and care to the LGBTQ community, unable to bless their holy unions. But that time is past, and that withered hand is healed and is now extended in love and care and welcome. The Holy Spirit has done what the Holy Spirit does, which is expand our vision, increase our diversity, and at the same time, unite us and send us out to serve others with and in the name of the boundless grace and love of Christ. That's what's, that is what makes a Sabbath day holy. And today is truly a holy Sabbath day. Thanks be to God. Amen.